Hi, this is Dan Smith, and welcome to today's episode. Today, I'm going to be talking to doctors and dentists and other healthcare professionals who are in private practice about trademarks. Now, the big question today is, how do you protect your trademarks, and why should you care? Why should you do it in the first place? Well, let's just get to it. Trademarks are among the most valuable business asset that many companies have. You can uh, go down the list of very famous companies from uh, the most famous companies that you see at the mall that, or you drive by every day down the street or you go to the grocery store and see their products or you wear their clothing or you wear their shoes and their trademarks are among their most valuable assets. And if you're in business as a health professional, either a doctor or a dentist or a nurse practitioner, and you're trying to brand your practice, uh, particularly now in this modern era when there's so much social media, so much marketing done uh, through Facebook and LinkedIn and through your website presence, um, through Instagram and all the other social platforms and places where people go electronically, to find out about your you and your practice. If you don't protect your trademarks, you're going to be um, shortchanging yourself because uh, you want to have a strong brand and you want to differentiate your practice from your competitor's practice. And essentially that's what a trademark does. A trademark is a name or a symbol or something along that line, a, 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 a mark that is could be a name, could be a tagline, could be a logo that identifies a particular business. It identifies the source of goods and services sold by that business. And that would include a professional medical, dental, nursing practice. The services that your practice provides, you want to differentiate them from the services provided by your competitor across town or across the street. And in order to do that, especially nowadays with so much social media presence and electronic communication and people finding you online, you want to have a strong brand and you want to have a strong differentiation from, between you and your competitors. So let's say you decide you want to uh, pick a name for your practice. Either you're just starting out or you're uh, rebranding your, your practice and you're selecting a new name, whatever. Uh, if, you, if you decide on a name, you want to make sure that it doesn't uh, infringe on a, the, the name of another existing uh, practice. Uh, and so you want to make sure and check to make sure that there is no competitor out there that's going to uh, uh, claim superior rights to you. Because in the United States, um, it's not necessarily, in fact, it's not the person who files first for registration of a trademark who has superior rights. It's the first person to use that trademark in business. And so when you get a trademark registration, that's great. Um, it does give you a lot of benefits and a lot of protections. But if someone uh, can show uh, in the proper uh, forum that they had uh, used that trademark first, they can either oppose your application for a trademark registration, or in some cases, depending on how long it has been and what you've filed uh, with the uh, USPTO or the US Patent and Trademark Office, it may be that a competitor or someone objecting to your use of, the, of a particular trademark might actually file something to, to uh, seek to take that trademark right away from you. So it's always uh, prudent. In fact, it's really, really important before you decide on a name or a logo, for example, of some kind of drawing or some uh, graphic design that you're going to identify with your business to make sure that there's not someone else out there using that same or um, a confusion, confusingly similar trademark. <clears throat> and the way you do this is you, um, you do a, a trademark search. Now there are companies that do trademark searches and that's what they do. Uh, you can kind of do a, uh, down and dirty sort of trademark search by just checking the trademark uh, filings, the registrations, applications on the USPTO database 
at their at the USPTO.gov website, and that's better than nothing. But it's not a full trademark search. You can also uh, do a Google search on various names and uh, trademarks, and that's helpful too because you'll run across some things that you wouldn't necessarily find by just looking at the USPTO database. But there are other companies and other services that provide a more detailed uh, trademark search by looking at state filings uh, and um, names of, of uh, organizations, corporations, LLCs, whatever that have filed in various state secretaries of state offices. Uh, it'll do, it'll do uh, Google searches, it'll do all these things, um, a lot of other databases. And that's, that's preferable before you invest a lot of money and a lot of time in deciding on a name or a logo or any other trademark, uh, you know, a, a tagline for your business, that, that you do a trademark, a good trademark search and get, uh, uh, get a, talk to an attorney who's, who's familiar with trademark issues and make sure that uh, there's a good comfort level that the trademark that you want to use is available and is not going to infringe on someone else and, and is not going to cause you problems and also is likely to be accepted uh, when you apply for a trademark registration for it. You know, in some cases if you use a, pick a name that's too similar to something else, um, you're going to get an office action from the uh, e examiner at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office saying uh, there may be a problem because there's an existing registration with a confusingly similar name. And so bottom line, first thing you want to do is make sure you have good um, uh, rights to use a particular trademark before you invest time and money into using it and marketing it and putting it on your goods and services. So step number one, do that search. Step two, once the search comes back and you can determine with your attorney that there's not really a problem, then the, that, uh, that's when you want to make your application to the USPTO for that particular trademark. It could be a name of your practice, it could be a graphic design logo, it could be a combination of the two, a name and a graphic design. It could be a phrase, which could be a tagline for your business, uh, whatever. And you want to uh, file that application with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office or the USPTO. And when you do that, you pay the filing fee, you do your application, uh, then you wait uh, a bit and at some point you will get uh, either uh, an acceptance that the, the, the trademark is okay for the time, you know, for this, this, far, this step in the process. And if it is, the uh, USPTO will then publish the, uh, your trademark in what's called the Official Gazette for opposition, which means that people are put on notice that's, that, that you have uh, claimed uh, rights in this particular trademark, and if they don't respond within a certain period of time, uh, then uh, the USPTA, uh, USPTO is going to allow that trademark to proceed to registration. And so that's, that's step number two is the application. Number three is once you get back uh, the clearance from the USPTO that, 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 that your trademark's been filed for opposition, no opposition's been filed, you're going to eventually get a trademark registration certificate from the USPTO. Now, I have to back up a minute. If you uh, are, um, there really are two ways that you can file uh, a trademark application. One is uh, an intent to use a particular trademark. And in a lot of cases, uh, businesses that don't want to invest a lot of money in, in uh, promoting a particular trademark, putting it on uh, signage and things of that sort before they know they're going to get it, will file a, an intent to use uh, application. So they don't really use the trademark until they get back, um, uh, you know, a, you know, something from the USPTO that says, yes, you're going to get this trademark, and then they can use it, and then you file what's called a statement of use within a, reg a particular period of time, and then you get your trademark registration. The other way is you're already using a particular trademark. You have to put on your application your first use in commerce, and then if, if, if everything goes through correctly, you'll actually get your uh, trademark registration. There's no filing for a uh, statement of use because you, when you file your application, you're already saying you're using it in commerce and you actually put a date, which is your first use in commerce. So 
that's that's the really the the next step in the process. So okay, so you've gotten your your trademark registration. It's wonderful. So before you get your trademark registration, if you are using it, you want to make sure that you uh, don't use the little the little R in a circle with respect to your trademark because that's only for use with registered trademarks. If you're if you're either you have either you haven't applied for a trademark registration or your trademark trademark registration has not been granted yet, then you can't use that little R in a circle. Okay, you, you can use uh, the little subscript you've seen TM or SM if it's for services you can use, uh, but you can't use the little R in a circle. Once you get your trademark registration, that's when you're good to go. You can use your your trademark and put in the corner uh, next to your trademark the little R in a circle. It shows the world that you have a registered trademark. Now, uh, I said the benefit of doing this is you're branding, you're showing the world that you have a particular trademark. There are uh, all kind of rights that flow from having a trademark registration. And I want to go back to this point. If you are in private practice as a dentist, a physician, a nurse practitioner, and you're trying to differentiate yourself and your practice from your competitors, you're going to have a name for your business. You're going to maybe have a logo for your business. You're going to maybe have a tagline a motto, a saying that you that you want to associate with your business. Those are the kinds of things that you may want to uh, seek trademark registration for to keep, not only keep your competitors from using those, but also to identify uh, yourself with those, um, with that saying, with that name, with that logo, so that your prospective patients or your patients will associate that trademark with you and with nobody else. Okay, that's very important. It's a great thing to have a trademark registration for your practice. Uh, whether you're a physician, dentist, nurse practitioner, especially nowadays with everything going on on the internet, with social media, you're gonna wanna have good uh, intellectual property protection, in this case, uh, good trademark protection. All right, I hope that helps and we'll see you next time.